thanks for joining the session on retainage. It's also known as holdbacks and also known as retention, depending on where you are in the world. Today, what we're going to look at is how to process a transaction. We're going to look at a purchase invoice, but you can also use a purchase order. And we're going to have a default value of retainage as a percentage coming from our vendor onto the purchase invoice and going doing a calculation, splitting up the retainage entries by tax. We're then going to have a look at some basic reporting and we're going to release that retainage uh, amount as a new purchase value, new AP value, accounts payable value, and then we're going to be able to see how to process that. Let's start in a purchase invoice. I've already got a purchase invoice prepared just to save time. You will see in here that I'm going against this vendor Armstrong framing. I've already added the vendor invoice number and I have uh, set up three different lines, uh, two against one tax type, uh, a, th a third line against a separate tax type. Uh, we can process, uh, the system will process um, any sales tax out of North America. It will also process VAT entries out of Europe or, or Australia, depending on where you are and it will create one retainage entry rolled up for each tax mix. So in our situation, we've got a fairly simple tax uh, mix, but you, you could have something more complex and it will accommodate for that. Let's go ahead and get straight into creating the retainage line. It said it was 10%, just as a little pointer for you. Uh, it, this came down here on the purchase. I could have changed this retainage percentage and I could have also changed the terms code if I wish. This terms code and this percentage was defaulted from the vendor and it calculated the due date here. Uh, you should note that the retainage due date is just a suggestion, the same as the regular due date is, and you can go and release that retainage as and when you wish. And so uh, we're basically done here. There's, um, uh, other than give a small explanation that we assume that uh, we have trustworthy accountants and that the accountant can make a change if they wish. So if they wanted to, they could go and change this value here, uh, increase it, decrease it, or, or just go and remove the line completely. Um, we're just gonna leave it as 10% and allow the system to calculate as it was defaulted. Let's go ahead and post that transaction and up we go. I'm not gonna bother to open the posted invoice. Uh, I'm just gonna go out of here and have a look at the vendor to see some of the detail entries and why they happened. So if I go into Armstrong Framing as a vendor and I look at um, the home uh, section, you will see that there is a new button called Vendor Retainage Entries. As I click onto the Vendor Retainage Entries and I look at this uh, invoice, this is the most recently posted transaction, you will see that there are all sorts of calculations in here. The uh, amount of the invoice, the retainage amount, the taxable amount that came from that, and the retainage amount, including the tax. Uh, and, and so you might look at this and go, well, that's not exactly 10% or the mix of this isn't what I, what I was expecting. So why is that? You can just go right into this detail entries button at the top here and it will say to you, oh, okay, you did the first 50 uh, with a non-taxable amount and you did the second um, roll up of 200 with a taxable amount. Just as a quick reminder, the tax amount here is not transacted on the original invoice. It's removed from the original value and it is only brought into play when you process the retainage entry. If I want to see the information in a report, I can come out of here. I can go back to the main menu and I can just do a quick search on retainage and you will see that there is an aged retainage payable listing specifically for retainage entries. I'm going to show the details here because that's kind of uh, helpful. And if you look at this, it will just show you the, the uh, report just of retainage entries. So this is in addition to an aged accounts payable listing. There they are. Let's cancel that. Let's, uh, what you'll also see in here is if I go to the actual ledger entries for this vendor, you will just see that original retainage amount. So if I click onto the uh, vendor and look at vendor ledger entries, then here are all my invoices on here and um, you will not see the amount of the retainage which has been released as yet against that invoice. So this was invoice number 19, and this is the original amount, 2484, and I've got an amount here, and as I scroll on, you will see um, to the, to the right-hand side, you will see that I got the retainage amounts which the system is expecting me to calculate. 
I'm going to go and make that retainage released. So the way to do that is again, just do a search on retainage and I'm going to click on release purchase retainage. These are all the values against the different vendors that I've got. You'll notice that the posting dates all exist as you would expect, the amounts, the retainage amounts and all the rest of it. This was the invoice that we had in question and I'm just going to go ahead and um, I, I can release one, two, three, whatever I want to release. As I click on them, select one or more entries and I click on this released selected invoices, you will see that it pops up a screen which says, OK, what are you trying to do here? Do you want to release multiple invoices? Do you want to release just invoices from this vendor? Um, do you want to release what you've selected? Uh, do you want to base this upon a due date? Do you want to base this upon a posting date? You know, what are the options here that you want to process? So we don't just have to select and release. We can make uh, choices here and we can say, uh, no, we're going to we're going to not base this upon, for instance, the retainage due date, although we may want to do that. We're actually just going to go ahead and release whatever we've selected. And as we click OK, what it does, you will notice that it creates new purchase values, removes them from this release purchase retainage screen. And if I come back out of here and I go back into my Armstrong framing vendor and I look up the uh, vendor ledger entries, you will see that there are new entries in here. You'll notice that what I did was I specified that, um, and this is in setup, uh, there is an entry of a, a dash RT to indicate its retainage entry. So these two relate to each other. It's These are both 19 documents. And I've just said, when you release the retainage entry, call it a dash RT. And you'll see over here, um, again, remember we're in the vendor ledger entries base table. You can see that the uh, retainage value uh, of the number 19 uh, release there was for 276. And you'll notice that this retainage value has been removed and that the accounts payable transaction has been created over here for that 276, which was skipped in the first place. Um, that's basically it. Once we've released that retainage value, we hand back over to Business Central and you can process your payable transactions as you would any other transaction. Um, thank you for watching and I hope this uh, makes sense for you.